Welcome back to Gary's Mod for another chemistry video for my high school class. Today we'll be discussing bonding, the various types of bonding, and various facts you will need to know for the IB exam. Over here, we have an Na atom and a Cl atom. Let's uh, move these back for a second. Um, these two atoms undergo ionic bonding. In ionic bonding, the electrons of Na leave to form a positive ion, or a cation, and the electron from Na is grabbed by Cl, forming a negative ion, or anion. Now, the overall structure of an ionically bonded molecu molecule is known as a lattice. Now, actually, give me one second here. So we can represent that by moving the electron from the Na, like I just did, in between the Na and Cl atoms. And the electron from the Cl in between these two atoms. Now note that the distance between the Na atom and the bonded electrons and the Cl atom and those bonded electrons are different, vastly different. This is due to Cl's high electronegativity value. In fact, the difference in electronegativities of bonding atoms predicts whether the bond is ionic or covalent. Moving on, we have a carbon with two and with two oxygen atoms. The electronegativities of carbon and oxygen are very close together, and therefore the atoms share their electrons, unlike in ionic bonding where the electron completely leaves the cation. So, uh, we can just bond these two together. These form double bonds made up of a sigma and pi, which will be sort of semi-relevant later. And much like in the ionic bonding, the uh, electrons are closer to the atom with the higher electronegativity, which in this case is oxygen. But um, they're not as vastly different as they were between Na and Cl. Like previously stated, these are because of the similar electronegativity values. Covalently bonded molecules are small and usually exist in gases form at STP, while ionic lattices are solid, like the salt molecule over there. All the electron. Yeah, uh, never mind. I read the same thing over. Moving on. I have a script. Shut up. Over here, we have an ethanoate ion as represented with the negative up there in the sky. Um, these mo Some molecules have delocalized electrons, which means that the, ele the electrons of a pi bond somewhere in the molecule can move, and in this one, it's the pi bond created from a double bonded O. If I were to show this differently, it would uh, it would be like that. Um, but because of delocalized electrons, it's actually known as it's also known as a resonant structure, so it exists in both forms. But in the real world, it exists as sort of a little of both. Electrons in the middle. The C to O bonds in this molecule have qualities of both a single and double bond, or um, in between a single and double bond. Right. Next up is a piece of metal. We'll just call this titanium, because t uh, it's a transition metal and can undergo metallic bonding. In metallic bonding, there is a sea of electrons, represented by the minuses, and positive charge centers spread around the metal. Like, uh, like imagine this as a stick of titanium. And these are the nucleuses, nuclei, yeah, that. Due to metallic bonding, metals often express high conductivities and malleability. Metals conduct electricity because when an electron attacks a piece of metal, it actually pushes the sea of electrons a bit forward. So we can take this electron over here, bring it in, and that's going to end up knocking one of these electrons over. Metals are also malleable because of the sea of electrons and positive charge centers which can slide past each other while still maintaining bonds. Yay, it's bent. Oh. What was that? Oh. Let's, let's investigate. What? 
Gmod pony. Ah! I'm being on, I'm under attack! Ah. Ah. Curse that Gmod pony. Well, I think I'm safe over here. Really dark though. Should investigate. Or actually, what is this? Oh, lights. Huh. What what is this? What is going on? Oh. Well, uh that's a bit embarrassing. 